Hi. I'm going to talk about Understand Dine Majoloblastoma. Megaloblastoma is a highly malignant primary brain tumor that originates in the part of the brain that is towards the back and the bottom, on the floor of the skull, in the cerebellum or posterior fossa. The brain is divided into two main parts, the larger cerebrum on top and the smaller cerebellum below towards the back. They are separated by a membrane called the tentorium. Tumors that originate in the cerebellum or the surrounding region below the tentorium are therefore called infratentorial. Another term for megaloblastoma is infratentorial primitive neuroectodermal tumor. Megaloblastoma is the most common PNIT originating in the brain. All PNIT tumors of the brain are invasive and rapidly growing tumors that, unlike most brain tumors, spread through the cerebrospinal fluid and frequently metastasize to different locations in the brain and spine. The cumulative relative survival rate for all age groups and histology follow-up was 60%, 52%, and 47% of 5 years, 10 years, and 20 years, respectively, with children doing better than adults. Incidents when looking at an estimated 68,530 primary brain and central nervous system tumors for 2012 in the USA, between 2005 and 2009 embryonal tumors represented about 3,707 cases and of which 2,617 were in children between 0 and 19 years of age during the stated period. Megaloblastomas affect just under 2 people per million per year, and affect children 10 times more than adults. Megaloblastoma is the second most frequent brain tumor in children after pilocytic astrocytoma and the most common malignant brain tumor in children, comprising 14.5% of newly diagnosed cases. In adults, megaloblastoma is rare, comprising fewer than 2% of CNS malignancies. The incidence of childhood megaloblastoma is higher in males than females, a feature which is not seen in adults. Megaloblastoma and other PNITs are more prevalent in younger children than older children. 40% of megaloblastoma patients are diagnosed before the age of 5, 31% are between the ages of 5 and 9, 18.3% are between the ages of 10 and 14, and 12.7% are between the ages of 15 and 19. Pathogenesis Megaloblastomas usually form in the vicinity of the fourth ventricle, between the brainstem and the cerebellum. Tumors with similar appearance and characteristics originate in other parts of the brain, but they are not identical to megaloblastoma. Although it is thought that megaloblastomas originate from immature or embryonal cells at their earliest stage of development, the exact cell of origin, or megaloblast has yet to be identified. It is currently thought that megaloblastoma arises from cerebellar stem cells that have been prevented from dividing and differentiating into their normal cell types. This accounts for the varying histologic variants seen on biopsy. Both perivascular pseudoreset and homerite rosette pseudoreset's formation are highly characteristic of megaloblastoma and is seen in up to half of the cases. Homerite rosettes are pseudoreceptors consisting of tumor cells surrounding a fibrillar area. Recent integrated genomic studies have revealed that megaloblastoma is composed of four distinct molecular and clinical variants termed WNT, SHH, Group 3 and Group 4. Of these subgroups WNT patients have an excellent prognosis and Group 3 have a dismal prognosis. There also exists subgroup specific alternative splicing which further confirms the existence of distinct subgroups and highlights the transcriptional heterogeneity between subgroups. Megaloblastomas are also seen in Galling syndrome as well as Turcotte syndrome. 
symptoms are mainly due to secondly increased intracranial pressure due to blockage of the fourth ventricle and are usually present for one to five months before diagnosis is made. The child typically becomes listless, with repeated episodes of vomiting, and a morning headache, which may lead to a misdiagnosis of gastrointestinal disease or migraine. Soon after, the child will develop a stumbling gait, frequent falls, diplopia, papilledema, and sixth cranial nerve palsy. Positional dizziness and nystagmus are also frequent and facial sensory loss or motor weakness may be present. Extraneural metastasis to the rest of the body is rare, and generally occurs only after craniotomy. Diagnosis The tumor is distinctive on T1 and T2 weighted MRI with heterogeneous enhancement and typical location adjacent to an extension into the fourth ventricle. Histologically, the tumor is solid, pink gray in color, and is well circumscribed. The tumor is very cellular, many mitoses, little cytoplasm, and has the tendency to form clusters and rosettes. Correct diagnosis of medulloblastoma may require ruling out atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor treatment and prognosis. Treatment begins with maximal resection of the tumor. The addition of radiation to the entire neuraxis and chemotherapy may increase the disease-free survival. There is some evidence that proton beam irradiation provides some benefits in terms of reducing the impact of radiation on the cochlear and cardiovascular areas and that it reduced the cognitive late effects of cranial irradiation. This combination may permit a 5-year survival in more than 80% of cases. Increased intracranial pressure may be controlled with corticosteroids or a ventricular peritoneal shunt. Main article, intracranial pressure chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is now an important part of treatment for all patients with medulloblastoma. tumor. It can significantly reduce risk of recurrence. There are a couple of different chemotherapeutic regimens for medulloblastoma, but most involve a combination of lomastine, cisplatin, carboplatin, vincristine or cyclophosphamide. In younger patients, chemotherapy can delay, or in some cases possibly even eliminate, the need for radiotherapy. Currently in NCI-supported phase I clinical trial involving the Curies, Genentich compound Vishmadegib is being evaluated in pediatric medulloblastoma patients, and has been tested in some PNIT patients as well. This compound targets a cellular signaling pathway of the cancer cells, which controls how they divide and grow. Outcome prediction based on genomics. Array-based karyotyping of 260 medulloblastomas by Pfister S. A. Dow resulted in the following clinical subgroups based on cytogenetic profiles, poor prognosis, gain of 6 Q or amplification of mycormycin intermediate, gain of 17 Q or an I without gain of 6 Q or amplification of mycormycin excellent prognosis, 6 Q and 17 Q balanced or 6 Q deletion. See also, virtual karyotype. Transcriptional profiling show the existence of four main subgroups. Very good prognosis, WNT group, CTNNB1 mutation infants good prognosis, others intermediate, SHH group, PTCH1 slash SMO slash SAFU mutation, GLI2 amplification, or mycin amplification poor prognosis. Group 3, mic amplification, photoceptor, gabagic gene expression intermediate prognosis. Group 4, gene expression of neuronal, glutamatergic, CDK6 amplification, mic amplification. Survival The cumulative relative survival rate for all age groups and histology follow up was 60%. 52%, and 47% at 5 years, 10 years, and 20 years, respectively. Patients diagnosed with a medulloblastoma or PNIT are 50 times more likely to die than a matched member of the general population.
The most recent population-based five-year relative survival rates are 69% overall, but 72% in children and 67% in adults. The 20-year survival rate is 51% in children. Children and adults have different survival profiles, with adults faring worse than children only after the fourth year post-diagnosis. Before the fourth year, survival probabilities are nearly identical. Using gene transfer of SV40 large T antigen in neuronal precursor cells of rats, a brain tumor model was established. The PNIDs were histologically indistinguishable from the human counterparts and have been used to identify new genes involved in human brain tumor carcinogenesis. The model was used to confirm P53 as one of the genes involved in human megaloblastomas, but since only about 10% of the human tumors showed mutations in that gene, the model can be used to identify the other binding partners of SV40 large T antigen, other than P53. Thanks for watching. Please see my link in description for more information. Bye.